Hey guys, this is Caleb with the Command Valley bringing you another Strixhaven Precon Upgrade Guide. Today we'll be upgrading the Quantum Quandrix deck, coming out in Commander 2021. But first, I need to say thank you to this channel's sponsor, GameGrid Lehigh. Check out their online store after the video to pick up all of your Strixhaven and other magic needs. And you can support the channel while doing so by clicking the link to their website in the description below. To support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. With that out of the way, let's dive into upgrading your Quantum Quandrix pre-constructed deck. Each year, Wizards releases 4 to 5 100 card commander decks that are meant to be played against each other or other decks at similar power levels. These decks are aimed more specifically toward newer players and they do a great job making fun and powerful beginner level decks. However, there's always a lot of room to improve on these decks. That being said, this is going to be a $20 budget upgrade that you can do right after purchasing your very own Quantum Quandrix deck. And just a disclaimer, just because I have decided to take something out or add something in doesn't mean that you have to. It's okay to disagree and we would actually love it if you commented below with what you agree with, what you disagree with in this video, and what you would take out of the precon or add to the precon. So let's quickly talk about the commander of this deck, Adrix and Nev Twin Casters. Adrix and Nev costs two, a green and a blue for a 2-2 legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. It has Ward 2, which says whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays two. And its second ability says if one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. I got super excited when I first saw this new commander because it's basically a parallel line lives in the command zone. And according to this commander, it appears that we should be focusing on making lots and lots of tokens and going wide on the battlefield, eventually overwhelming our opponents. And having a parallel lives or the ability to create twice as many tokens as normal is going to help us immensely. However, one of the first things that I noticed when looking through this list is that most of the tokens in the deck or token makers focus on making 0, zero green and blue fractal creatures with plus one plus one counters on them. And therefore it's also got quite a bit of plus one plus one counter synergy or cards that care about plus one plus one counters and I'm not really a big fan of how this deck is somewhat split between making the tokens and then also focusing slightly on the plus one plus one counters theme. I really want to change the focus of this deck to be a little bit more on making lots of tokens, lots of really good helpful tokens. So really quickly, this is what I have chosen to remove. And again, just because I have taken it out doesn't mean that you have to for your deck. So the, the cards that I've taken out are Lanawar Reborn, Novagen Heart of Progress, and Tranquil Thicket. And I've decided to take out these three lands because the deck already had 40 lands in it, which I think is just a little bit too much, especially if we're going to drop the average CMC of the deck, which I have attempted to do here as well. And then... Kazandu Tusk Caller, Biomathematician, Cassetto Orochi Archmage, Mana Gorger Hydra, Plax Caster Frogling, Primal Empathy, Crafty Cut Purse, Forgotten Ancient, Arashi the Sky Asunder, we'll have some better ways of dealing with flying, Paradox Zone, which I think is just a little bit too slow even though it's a really cool enchantment, Hydra Broodmaster, Terracidon, and Desolation Twin which is a really cool card, but getting up to 10 mana to get a vanilla 1010 and another vanilla 1010 and maybe another vanilla 1010, I just didn't seem that fun. I could see you keeping this one in, especially if your games with your playgroup tend to go a little bit longer. But like I said before, I wanted to lower the CMC, the average CMC of the deck just a little bit. So that's why we're taking out Desolation Twin and Terracidon, just to make the deck go a little bit faster. I would really, really hate to have Desolation Twin in my starting hand or draw it on turn three and have it for most of the game. So those are the 16 cards that I've decided to take out. And now let's talk about the 16 cards I've decided to put in. The very first one is a card from the new set, Decisive Denial. 
For a green and a blue, you've got an instant where you can choose one target creature you control fights target creature you don't control or counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays three. So we've got a really nice cheap spell that will give us two options to either counter a spell or use one of our big creatures, one of our big tokens most likely, to fight one of our opponent's creatures. This is a really cool and flexible new card out of Strixhaven. Next we've got Growth Spiral that costs the same as Decisive Denial, one green and one blue. It's also an instant and it lets you draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. This deck already had a pretty good amount of ramp, but I wanted to add just a little bit more in the form of Growth Spiral and also Cultivate, which costs two and a green. You get to search your library for two basic lands, reveal those cards, put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other one into your hand. And I've also added Skyclave Relic as an additional piece of ramp. It costs three and it has a kicker of three. It's indestructible and when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two tapped tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic. Unless of course you have your commander out, you'll be making four instead. So that is pretty awesome. So essentially you are paying six to ramp five, which is so good. Keep in mind, most of these cards that I've decided to add are because of who our commander is, keeping in mind that we have a parallel lives or a token doubling ability in the command zone that we're gonna have access to all game long. So cards like Jace Mirror Mage are also really good with our commander. So Jace Mirror Mage costs one and two blue. He's a legendary planeswalker Jace with four starting loyalty. You can kick it for two and it says when it enters the battlefield, if Jace was kicked, create a token that's a copy of Jace Mirror Mage, except it's non-legendary and its starting loyalty is one. Well, if you have your commander out, you'll actually make two copies of Jace, which means double the scry power, double the potential of drawing cards with his zero ability. This is a really cool planeswalker to have in this deck. Next up is Mimic Vat. Mimic Vat is an artifact that costs three. It has an imprint ability that says whenever a non-token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exiled with Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard. Then you can pay three and tap it to create a token that's a copy of the card exiled with Mimic Vat. It gains haste and then you exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So again, we're going to pay three, tap this thing. We're going to make two of of whatever the card is that we've exiled with Mimic Vat thanks to our commander. Next up, we've got Mist Syndicate Naga that costs two and a blue. It's a 3-1 creature Naga Ninja. It also has Ninjutsu for two and a blue. And Ninjutsu says, return an unblocked attacker you control to your hand. Put this card onto the battlefield from your hand tapped and attacking. So basically, you go to combat, you swing with your creatures. If you have a creature that is not blocked, you can then activate Mist Syndicate Naga's ability to put it onto the battlefield attacking, returning the creature that wasn't blocked. And then Mist Syndicate Naga also says, when it deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of Mist Syndicate Naga but we're going to make two, of course, with our commander. Next up, we've got Nadir Kraken that costs one and two blue. It's a two, three Kraken that says, whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Nadir Kraken and create a one, one blue tentacle creature token. Unless you've got your commander out, then of course it will be two tokens. Next up, we've got Repudiate and Replicate. The first half costs a hybrid green-blue, hybrid green-blue, and is an instant and says counter target activated or triggered ability. The second half or second option is you can pay one, a green, and a blue for a sorcery that creates a token that's a copy of a creature that you control. Unless, of course, your commander is in play, then you get to create two. Not that we really needed a lot more help dealing with flying since we already have Hornet Queen and Hornet Nest in the deck. I did promise you that we would have some additional ways of dealing with flying or at the very least blocking flyers and we get that in the form of Arasta of the Endless Web. It costs two and two green for a three five legendary enchantment creature spider with reach and whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell create a one two green spider creature token with reach and we've also got murmuring mystic 
that costs three and a blue for a one five creature human wizard that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell create a one one blue bird illusion creature token with flying and of course as with all of these cards if you have your commander out we'll be making twice as much next up i think is one of my favorite cards that i have added to this deck and it is bio waste blob for two and two green you get a zero zero creature ooze so far not very good it says oozes you control get plus one plus one all right cool so we've got a one one for four luckily it also says at the beginning of your upkeep if you control a commander create a token that's a copy of bio waste blob but we're going to make two which means that if this sticks around for one round on our next turn with our commander out we will get two copies of bio waste blob which means that all of our oozes will be getting plus one plus one three times which makes three three threes and if those stick around for another round you're going to have nine nine nines so this card can get out of hand super quick it's kind of a silly card with a really funny name but i would be really excited to play this card in my Adrix and Nev Twin Casters deck. Next up, we've got one fourth of our entire budget here in the form of Master of Waves. It costs three and a blue for a two one Merfolk Wizard. It has protection from red, says elemental creatures you control get plus one plus one. And when it enters the battlefield, create a number of one zero blue elemental creature tokens equal to your devotion in blue. There are a lot of ways to make copies of creatures that we have in this deck. Copy master of waves is a really good idea so have fun doing that going back to oozes we've got biogenic ooze that costs three and two green for a two two creature ooze and when it enters the battlefield you create a two two green ooze creature token then at the beginning of your end step you put a plus one plus one counter on each ooze you control you can also choose to pay one and three green as many times as you want, as long as you have mana, to create a 2-2 two -two green ooze creature token. This obviously goes really well with the bio waste blob, but even by itself with our commander, we're going to be making a lot of oozes and they're going to get big and out of control. Speaking of going out of control, we've got Deep Forest Hermit that costs three and two green for a one one creature elf druid. It has vanishing three and when it enters the battlefield, you create four one one green squirrel creature tokens or eight if you have your commander, of course, and squirrels you control get plus one plus one. So yeah, you you play this card and you get eight two two squirrels. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Then in the next turn or two, with all of those squirrels or other ridiculous amounts of token creatures, you play and raise forerunners that costs five and three green for a seven seven with vigilance, trample, and haste. And when it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus two plus two and gain vigilance and trample until end of turn this card is going to win you games and that's it that's everything that i have added to upgrade the quantum quandrix precon deck one honorable mention that i would like to bring up is bio visionary i really wanted to add this card to the deck but i don't know if it has enough copy abilities to make it worth it but it is definitely something that if you wanted to build towards i would add to the deck really quickly he costs one a green and a blue for a two three that says at the beginning of the end step if you control four or more creatures named biovisionary you win the game with the help of our commander and cards like Rite of Replication or Spitting Image and also Essex, which is in the deck, you can easily win out of nowhere with this card. So again, it's not in my official 16 cards added, but if there's one that you didn't like and you want to try out Biovisionary, I would suggest you do. I probably would. He is a super cool and fun way to win the game. And that's it. You have made it to the end of the video. Please like this video and smack that subscribe button. Sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to support us directly, view exclusive content, join our Discord, and receive merch and tons of other sweet perks. 
thank you again to GameGrid Lehigh for sponsoring our channel. You can click on the link to their website in the description to shop for all of your magic needs there, and you'll be supporting our channel as well. You can also take the list of cards that we have in the description and copy it into their deck building tool to buy all of the singles that we've talked about there. Lastly, you can find us on Twitter at CommandValleyP1 and on Facebook by clicking the link below. Thanks everyone.